Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series, facilitated by renowned educators. ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. All right, so it is 3 p.m. here in New York. We're going to get things started. So thanks, everyone, for joining us. Welcome to this afternoon's webinar. Today's session will be hosted by Ilian Yotov, who will be teaching us how to use the quarters theory with FX options. Ilian is an FX strategist and creator of the quarters theory. His published works include the quarters theory, the revolutionary new foreign currencies trading method. Ilian was one of the leading Forex educators in the world and has trained thousands of Forex traders from over 20 countries across the globe. He is also the founder of AllThingsForex.com and TraderTape.com and host of the popular broadcast on All Things Forex. So, Ilian, we're going to go ahead and turn it over to you for today's presentation. Thanks. Thank you so much, Katrina. I appreciate it. And thank you to our friends at ISC for putting uh, this webinar together. Thank you for all of our attendees today. Welcome aboard. Uh, what we're going to discuss today is some of the methodologies of the quarters theory that I created and uh, some of the synergies between the quarters theory and FX options, a great product created a few years back by the International Securities Exchange. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to learn a lot of good, interesting things today. Uh, thank you for that introduction as well, Katrina. Um, many of you are familiar. Uh, with my name as the creator, as the creator of the quarter theory, my book, the quarter theory, the revolutionary new foreign currencies trading method, was published by John Wiley and Sons last year, and it is available everywhere where books are, are sold, whether on the internet or at your local Barnes and Noble or uh, Borders bookstores. Uh, I also invite you to join me Monday through Friday uh, for uh, live daily analysis of. Uh, current events on the foreign exchange markets, uh, and listen to my daily All Things Forex broadcast on my website, www.allthingsforex.com. Well, let's go ahead and get started with some of the uh, basics uh, on what the premise of the quarter theory is uh, built upon as far as the foundation of the quarter theory. The foundation of the quarter theory methodology is the base 10 numeral system of our world. Many of you know that the decimal system is a positional numeral system. It has positions for units, tens, hundreds, and so forth. The position of each digit conveys to the multiplier, which is a power of 10, to be used with that digit. Each, each position has a value 10 times that of the position to the right. Now, in a decimal notation, uh, we're writing numbers in a base 10 numeral system, which uses various symbols called digits for 10 distinct values to represent numbers, 0, 1, 2, and so forth, up to 9. Some of the uh, real and whole numbers uh, include the counting numbers, the integers, rational numbers, and irrational numbers. And what the quarter theory focuses mainly on is the whole numbers. I'd like you to take a very quick look here at the table of whole numbers. I want you to notice the first row, the first number in each row. When you take a look at that table of whole numbers, you will see that the first number in each row represents a critical junction that marks the end of a uh, one set of numbers, of 10 numbers, and then at the same time the beginning of a brand new set of uh, numbers. Why is this important? Well, it is important because with the quarter theory, I focus on what I call the major whole numbers, the ones that start at the same time, start and end a previous set, and, and then end a previous set, and then start a brand new set of 10 numbers. Those major whole numbers would be, for example, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 100, 1,000, and so forth. Currency exchange rates are also represented with decimal whole numbers, where you have the decimal point, for example, 
euro dollar exchange rate could be dollar and thirty cents, one point thirty or one point thirty one, one point thirty two, one point forty, and so forth. With the Australian dollar for uh, against the US dollar exchange rate, we could have uh, zero point eighty or point eighty one, point eighty two, point ninety, and so forth. Now the major decimal hall numbers would be instead of 30, 40, 50, 60, with currency exchange rates, the major decimal whole numbers for the euro dollar exchange rate, for example, would be 1.30 or a dollar and 30 cents, 1.40 or a dollar and 40 cents, and so forth. Aussie dollar would be 0.60 or, or 60 cents, 0 0.70, 0 0.80. Dollar Canadian, let's say it's at parity, which is one for one, one dollar, 1 1.00, 1.10, 1.20, 1.30. And when we take a look at these major decimal whole numbers uh, through which the currency exchange rates are represented, we know that uh, through currency, the process of currency decimalization, one unit of the main currency is divided into 100 subunits. For example, one euro or one US dollar are divided into 100 subunits called cents. One Swiss franc would be divided into 100 units called centimes, or 100 centimes. One British pound is divided into 100 pence. Now, for further precision, when currency exchange rates are rep represented, for further precision, they are decimalized even further by dividing the actual subunits, not just the main units, but also dividing the subunits. So the subunits were what? One cent, one centime, one pence. So one cent is divided further into 100 additional subunits, which are called price interest points, or as many of you know, FIPS, short for price interest points. Or in some currencies, like the Japanese yen, for example, the main unit is divided into 100 additional subunits for example, one yen is divided also into 100 FIPS. So when we take a look in terms of FIPS, we're going to realize very quickly that when we look at the distance between two major whole numbers, we'll have a uh, very clearly defined constant range of 1,000 FIPS, 10 FIPS or 10 centimes or 10 yen in terms of FIPS or price interest points, that's 1,000 FIPS. And in between two regular whole numbers, we'll have also a very clearly defined range, which is smaller. It's going to be a 100 FIP range, one penny, one centime, one yen. So the quarters theory focuses on these 1,000 FIP ranges and 100 FIP ranges. And here's an example that's on your screen. That lets you see that, for example, if the euro dollar exchange rate was into the dollar thirties, uh, the major whole number that the dollar and thirty cents would mark the beginning of the one thousand fifth range between dollar thirty and a dollar and forty cents. Those are the two major whole numbers that define that range. And then in between, you have regular whole numbers such as dollar thirty one, one point thirty two, one point thirty three, thirty four, and so forth. And the distance between the major whole numbers, dollar thirty and a dollar forty, or one point thirty, one point forty, would be ten cents or one thousand pips. The distance between, let's say, one thirty and one point thirty one is one hundred pips. So this is what gives you the one thousand pip ranges between the major whole numbers and between the regular whole numbers, between each whole number within the 1,000 pip ranges, we have smaller ranges of 100 pips. So what are the actual quarters? Well, we know that a quarter is uh, uh, a part of, of, of something. And in a decimal numeral system, we actually can divide these ranges into four equal parts, or as I do, four quarters, whether large or small. When we divide, for example, the 1,000 pip range between
between a dollar and thirty cents and a dollar and forty cents. Those are the major whole uh, large quarter points, major whole numbers. We will get several large quarters, four equal parts or four large quarters of two hundred and fifty pips each. Uh, this is what the 1,000 pip range looks like here between 1.30 and 1.40. And in between, we will have four large quarters between $1.30 and $1.3250, $1.3250 to $1.35, $1.35 to $1.3750, and then $1.3750 to $1.40. And uh, when we divide, with the quarter theory, I also divide the 100 pip ranges into four small parts and divide four small quarters of 25 pips each. For example, if the 100 pip range between 1.30 and 1.31 is divided into four equal parts, we'll get four small quarters between 1.30 and 1.30 to 25, 1.30 to 25 to 1.30 to 50. 1.3050 to 1.3025 and 1.3075 uh, rather, I'm sorry, and 1.3075 to 1.31. The quarters theory focuses uh, mainly on the large quarters, and I will give you some examples. But before that, let's do a little bit of a practice from what you have learned so far. And let's try to do a little exercise here and try to identify um, in several different examples, what would be the 1,000 pip range, the large quarter that the currency exchange rate is trading within, what would be the 100 pip range, and then with an even uh, more precision, we can zoom in, if you will, and take a closer look to even um, the uh, small quarter where a currency exchange rate is currently trading within. Okay, I'm seeing one of our participants says that there's no sound. Are you able to hear me? Yep, everything sounds fine over here. If anyone's experiencing any issues with sound, please check the webinar email that you received with your registration. That should have a call-in number for you to be able to call in and join us. All right, great. Thank you so much. All right, so let's do a little exercise. And for example, take a look at, let's assume that the euro dollar exchange rate is at 1.2345, or dollar twenty-three cents and 45 pips. So what would be the 1,000 pip range that the currency exchange rate is within at that point? That would be the 1,000 pip range between 1.20 and 1.30, dollar twenty and a dollar thirty cents. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit closer and take a look and see what would be the large quarter that the currency exchange rate is within. If the current rate is 1.2345, that would be the large quarter between 1.2250 and 1.25 cents. Um, so if we take a look at the 100 pip range at 1.2345, the 100 pip range would be between the whole numbers at 1.23 and 1.24. And then for even further precision, if we were to zoom in even closer, we will establish that the small quarter that the currency exchange rate is trading within is the quarter at 1.2345 current quote, the small quarter would be between 1.2325 and 1.2350. And this is a little exercise so that you can get uh, a little bit more used to identifying the actual ranges, the actual large quarter, small quarters, and so forth. So let's do the same thing with the dollar yen. Let's say the dollar yen is at 96.78. That is your current quote right now. So Applying the methodology of the quarter theory, a trader can say, okay, I can now know that the 1,000 pip range is between 90 and 100 yen. 96.78, that's your 1,000 pip range. What would be the large quarter? If the quote is 96.78, then the large quarter is 95 to 97.50 yen. 97.50 yen. And then the 100 pip range is between 96 and 97 yen and small quarter would be 96.75 to 97. So you can do that exercise with uh, currency exchange rates in the future uh, so that you can get and practice as far as identifying the 1,000 pip ranges, the 100 pip ranges, the large quarters, and the small quarters. 
Now we're going to talk about the main premise of the quarters theory. With the quarters theory, I create familiar, constant, uh, predictable ranges uh, that never, ever change. They are always constant ranges. These large quarters are always 250 pips each. The 1,000 pip ranges are always 1,000 pip uh, ranges. They're always 1,000 pips. So how does that benefit a trader? Well, by creating a familiar, constant, never-changing environment, obviously one of the benefits is that support and resistance levels vary. They change on a daily basis or weekly basis and so forth. Pivot points have to be recalculated every single day in order to establish them. The reliable price points of reference, and they definitely should be utilized in any trader's technical analysis methodologies. But with the quarters theory, what happens? Especially now that we have seen, let's say, um, the Australian dollar, for example, reaching brand new all-time highs, or at least highs that were not ever reach, reached since the Australian government allowed their currency, the Australian dollar, to float freely in the open markets. What does a trader need to do? What, what points can be utilized? One would say, well, maybe they can calculate some pivot points. Based on what? If you're trading into uh, uh, price levels that have not been reached before, what could be a reliable price point of reference? And this, in these type of examples, the quarter theory price points are very helpful, reliable, constant price levels that can be utilized as reliable price points of reference. And I'll show you some examples later on in this webinar as far as uh, uh, the quarter theory coming to help. Uh, the premise of the quarter theory, besides creating constant, never-changing ranges, the main premise of the quarter theory is, so I basically, with the quarter theory, proposed that price fluctuations are not random, that prices do not move in a chaotic manner, but rather in an organized manner. And I propose that every significant price move takes place from one large quarter point targeting another large quarter point. So there is organization when it comes to the quarter theory methodology. Constant, never changing, familiar price ranges. And with the quarter theory methodology, we establish the starting point of a price move, and we know clearly what the destination is. In other words, a price move always starts at a large quarter point and always ends at a large quarter point. Now, I'd like to show you the uh, following examples of, um, these are the real life examples, obviously, most recently with Euro dollar exchange rate. Now, let's take a look at this chart. It's a daily chart going all the way back to September, August, September of 2010. What can we establish here? Now that we're able to recognize these ranges, we can see that uh, for the most part, which is almost a year now, it looks like most of the price activity for the euro dollar exchange rate has been taking place within the 1,000 pip range defined by the two major large quarter points at the dollar and 30 cents and a dollar and 40 cents. With very few exceptions, where the euro has traded a little for a, a, a month or so here below dollar thirty, and uh, for a few weeks above a dollar and forty cents, and then in recent weeks obviously we've broken above dollar forty cents level, and I'll uh, give you some examples of that later on. But for the most part, for the majority of the last, if not one year, at least for the majority of the last nine months, we have seen the euro dollar exchange rate trading clearly within the range between dollar thirty and dollar forty cents. So what would be the large quarter points within that large uh, with, within that 1,000 pip range between dollar 40 and dollar 30 cents? That would be dollar 30 to dollar 3250, dollar 3250 to dollar 35, dollar 35 to dollar 3750, dollar 3750 to dollar and 40 cents. So with the quarter theory, I propose that every significant price move 
begins from a large quarter point and targets another large quarter point. Here is a picture perfect textbook example of uh, those type of price patterns. Now let's take a look. Excuse me one second. Where is that? Um, that slide. Oh, you know what, <laughs> Katrina? You know what? I think that I added it a little bit later. I had to send the <laughs> presentation. Uh, oh, did we have an additional slide that's that's missing now? Yeah, I do. I. <laughs> that's what I was wondering. Where did that one go? <laughs> oh no. Uh, that's okay. Um, can I exchange my desktop from here? Yeah, sure. I you should be able to. Okay, one second. Bear with me, guys. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I uh, I added it actually yesterday afternoon. And, okay, uh, yeah. I if you go up to share, you should be able to share your desktop. Okay, let's do that. Let me go and do share and then desktop. Okay. Okay, are you guys able to see the desktop now? Yep, looks like we've got it. Okay, good. Good. So this is the slide that I wanted to show. It's a very important slide because it shows you these uh, price patterns that if you haven't been paying attention to them, then at least from now on, you'll be able to identify them, I think, for the rest of your trading careers. Let's take a look at the euro-dollar currency pair. That is uh, ticker symbol EUU uh, when it comes to ICFX options. In, what is that, March 17th or so, the trading session then, the uh, euro dollar exchange rate breaks above the major large quarter point at the dollar and 40 cents. So when we see that uh, type of a price move, that breakout above a major large quarter point or a large quarter point occur, if a trader is utilizing the methodologies of the quarter theory, then obviously the next logical price point that we can anticipate to be targeted would be the large quarter point above a dollar and 40 cents. As we know, with the methodology of the quarter theory. The quarter theory proposes that every significant price move takes place from one large quarter point targeting another large quarter point. So what we're seeing there is the breakout above dollar 40. It's a bullish uh, price move. The euro is moving higher. And then it goes up and it reaches this price point right there. Those of you who pay attention to the euro dollar exchange rate well, remember that the high on uh, these couple of days was $1.47.52, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Hold on here. I think I had it somewhere. Okay, there we go. This is, I'll show you that in a minute. So we reach $1.47.42.47 uh, uh, Then prices never break above the large quarter point of the $1.42.50. According to the quarter theory, when prices remain below a targeted large quarter point, they can complete the quarter. But if uh, they do not break above a targeted large quarter point, if there isn't a decisive breakout, then the most likely uh, prices will start working on a large quarter below rather than above $1.4250 large quarter point. So what happens next? For a couple of days here, we have two identical highs at the dollar forty two forty seven and a dollar forty two forty five or so. And then the next day prices start breaking down and they go, guess where? To the large quarter point at the dollar and forty cents. They reach this low here, which is dollar forty twenty one. They never break below dollar forty. They remain above the large quarter point, then they reverse back to the large quarter point at the dollar forty two fifty. On this next attempt, however, prices do break above $1.4250, and where would you say, applying the premises of the quarter's theory, 
what do you think the next large quarter point targeted will be? Prices produce a decisive breakout above dollar forty two fifty and then the door would be wide open for them to work on a next large quarter between dollar forty two fifty and a dollar and forty five cents, which is a large quarter point uh, above dollar forty two fifty. And so in recent example, uh, in recent days we have in weeks we have seen those type of patterns uh, taking place, which is pretty much of a textbook example as far as the quarter theory methodologies are concerned. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.